Yo, yo, what's going on, YouTube fam? Hope everybody all right, man. All my kings and queens out there, man, trying to make it, trying to maintain, doing your thing. Most definitely, most definitely. So, yeah, man, back with another video, man. Before I get into it, got to ask y'all, please, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Got a lot of stories for y'all, man. Y'all gonna love it, man. Y'all gonna love it, man. Some of these stories gonna make us laugh. Some of them gonna make you sad. You know what I mean? Some of them gonna learn some wisdom from it. You know, I'll tell you what I learned from them. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's all good. It's all love. So, on this video, I was gonna briefly explain how we was getting phones in. How we was smuggling phones into the prisons, all right? Um... So, the prison situation can vary from prison to prison, you know what I mean? Each camp, when we call them camps, is going to be different, you know what I mean? Some camps are going to be flooded, where phones can be as low as $150, $200, or they could be scarce, and the phone can go as high as $3,500, $3,000. So, uh... When I first got to my first prison in May of 2009, um, it was plentiful there. The phones were plentiful, you know, but at that time we didn't have no smartphones and no touch screens and nothing like that. All we had was flip phones, all right? All we had was flip phones. We called them flops, uh, gustos, uh, vanillas, you know what I mean? Whatever, different names that we called them. But at the time, phones were going for like 150, 200. So in my mind, when I first got to the prison, I'm like, dang, man, like, dang, $200? Like, my people ain't gonna break no $200 just so I can have no phone. You know what I mean? They might send $25, $50 or something like that on my books. So I had some food to eat or something, but they not finna send me no $200 just so I can have no phone. So I had to start thinking of a way to get a phone because, like, that was just a thing to do. Like, you and you in prison, you, you need a phone. Like, that's just going to help your time go by super fast. So uh, shortly after I first got to the prison, um, they put me into this uh, carpentry course. All right, so I'm taking this carpentry class. It was like a big-ass warehouse full of wood and lumber and stuff and they teaching us how to work with the lumber how to make chairs and tables and little desks and whatever so shortly after me attending this class i noticed that they were letting free world people you know what i mean people from the outside just come and donate lumber to the program and they would you know let these people drive in past the gates you know what i mean drive up to the carpentry building and we the inmates were going out and unloading these people's trucks and bringing the stuff into the building. So a light bulb went off. And I'm like, oh shit. Like, yo, if I can get somebody to implant some phones into the lumber, I can get a phone, right? So at the time I had a roommate. And my celly was uh was, you know, this this big money dude, you know, on the street. You know, he sold kilos of coke and he had he was the brick man, you know what I mean? So he had a lot of money and whatever. So I pitched the idea to him, like, look, bro, get your people, you know what I mean, to get some phones and put it in the wood, you know what I mean, and I can get it, I can get it. Had them come up here, tell them to call up here to prison, tell them they want to donate some wood, and I can get it. So dude ain't believe in me, right? He ain't he believe, he ain't he see the vision at first, right? So... You know, he trying all these other ways. You know, he tried this way, it didn't work. Tried that way, it didn't work. So, it took about about four months, man. About four months of him trying different things. So he finally came back to me and was like, "Hey, bro, you um, you really think you can get these phones in, man? This way that you're talking about, man?" And I'm like, "Yes, bro. I'm like, yes. Believe me, bro. Trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. This shit gonna be simple, bro. This shit sweet." So. He like, all right, all right. So I give him a rundown. I tell him, I said, tell your people to get six two by four, you know, two by four pieces of lumber. I said, the two in the middle, have them cut out like, like a C shape in it. Like two pieces of lumber, have them cut out like a little niche 
in each one so that when you put them together they'll be like a box in the middle of these two pieces right place the phones in there and then take two more pieces of lumber on the top and two more on the bottom and strap these six pieces of lumber together but also buy a few other bundles of six you know what i mean and put them all on the truck you know what i mean and then we gonna we gonna get it have your people mark you know what i mean which bundle got the phones and then i'll make sure i grab that one so I'm giving them the rundown, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know, they calling up there. They telling them, you know what I mean? Yeah, we got some wood. We want to donate, you know what I mean? Whatever. So after about two weeks, you know what I mean, of me breaking it down to them, they did it, right? So on this day, like today is the day, and uh, I'm waiting, you know what I mean? I'm in the warehouse. I'm waiting for his people to show up, to see his people show up. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, yeah, like this shit going to work. It's going to work. So... Uh, I see the I see the people pull up, so you know what I'm saying the people stopping them at the gates. I'm seeing them search them at the gates and stuff. You know what I mean. So they finally get past the gates, and when I got to the truck to go pull up to their truck to get the stuff, these idiots got a truck full of burnt ass lumber, bro. Like like a house burnt down, and they got trash like this is trash like we can't do nothing with this stuff but in the middle of all this debris and all of this fucking trash burnt up black ass lumber they have a freaking box <laughs> and i call it, it a box because they did not do nothing of what i told them to do they took some one by fours all right they took some flat one by fours and they kind of stapled them together like this all right and they put like a cap on each end so and this shit standing out like a motherfucker this fresh brand new lumber one by fours i told them to get two by fours they didn't do nothing this whole thing is like a box and it's hollowed in the inside and uh and um it's standing out among all this black ass shit. So I see it. So I grab that. I got the officer right here. You know what I mean? I grab it. I mean, it was, it was kind of like under all the other burnt ass shit. So I grab it. I'm pulling it out. And, and the officer's like, hey, man, why you grabbing that piece for, man? Why don't you grab this other stuff on top of it? I'm like, shoot. I already got this piece now. I ain't got no fuck it. So shit, I pull it out. I put it on my shoulder. I take it in. So I take it into the building. So as soon as I take it into the building... I go to a little saw, one of them little pull down little saws, and and I lay, I, I cut it in half. And when I cut it in half, I peeked inside. I was able to peek inside of it. I see like a Walmart bag. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I take, I take that piece, and I go around to this little shed by myself, and I pull out the phones. So the deal was, it was ten phones. It was supposed to be ten phones. I'm supposed to get three, and he was supposed to get seven. So, I'm counting the phones. There's only nine phones. All right, keep that in mind, cause that's a that's that's important note. There was only nine phones, little flip phones. So, I'm like, yo, I tell him, I'm like, yo, bro, um, it's only you know I got back to the dorm that day, cause I could only bring out so many phones per day, because they searched the 